Hi, welcome to This Is My Architecture. My name is Andrea, and I'm here with Sandip from Expedia. Hi, Sandip. Welcome to the show. Hi, Andrea. Thank you. So what do you guys do? So we are the travel technology company. We help uh, people travel from any part of the world to anywhere in the world, and by providing unique products like air, car, cruise, uh, lodging, everything. Very cool. So today, we're going to talk about a very special uh, topic. Uh, you built a very unique pattern for integrating AWS to Salesforce. What integrations have you guys built? Yeah, sure. So we collect data from various different Expedia channels, various different Expedia platforms. Some of them are on-prem, but mostly running into the cloud right now. So we consume that data, process it through the uh, AWS, and then push the data to the Salesforce Einstein Analytics, which is a reporting engine, and then provide a global unique experience to our business users. Very cool. Let's dive straight into it, shall we? Definitely. I see Expedia Group. Walk us through what apps are we talking about there. So from this Expedia different applications, we are getting data, uh, let's say, booking, mm -hmm. payments, and uh, some of our partners' data. OK. Um, so we see a couple of different patterns here, right? I see S3, ECS. Is this, there's a batch and a streaming component right. here. Okay. Can you walk us through maybe the top layer, S3? Right. So I can divide this architecture into two different patterns. Mm -hmm. So if I have to draw a line right there, okay. the first part of the architecture, the top uh, section talks about uh, batch processing, or you can say daily processing, okay. because this is when we get the data from Expedia applications on a daily basis. Okay. And the lower part actually talks about the real-time integration which we have built so, and providing this unique real-time data to our Salesforce users. I see. What do you store in S3? What components so are you S3, I can call it as a, our data ingestion layer okay. uh, or a data lake. So we collect uh, data from various Expedia group applications mm -hmm. into S3. And by the way, the data is coming into various different formats. formats. Some okay. of them could be parquet, CSVs, uh, JSON, you name it. It. So okay. it's all heterogeneous sources. I see. And then what we do, we leverage the serverless architecture, Glue, okay. which is the great ETL tool. So we consume all this data, transform all this data, and then make it a unified uh, format and uh, push it to the S3. I see. If you could draw this out then for our viewers, um, what what's the difference between Glue and uh, EC2? Sure. What, what would the differentiation so be? So when we are building this architecture, mm -hmm. Glue no doubt is a great tool, but has certain limitations at that time. Like it didn't have a bookmark support uh -huh. for the parquet files. So we, that's why we are doing that work into our EC2. Plus there's some more customization which was not uh, done through Glue. That's why we are leveraging the EC2 over here. And then most of the data going through from here, getting transformed comes into a common format into the S3 over here, which, by the way, is a CSV, CSV. because the Salesforce Einstein Analytics currently mm. has only limited to the CSV format. I see. That's a very interesting architectural pattern here to convert it to a format that is consumable by Salesforce. Now, let's dive into the real-time stream. Right. Um, ECS. Yeah, Why so are you ECS. Using ECS. So we have actually a Kafka consumer right. running on the ECS. Oh, wow. Yeah, so Kafka consumer consumes the real-time events, mm -hmm. and then we push it to the Aurora right here. And I'll come back in a moment while we're pushing to Aurora. Then we have a bunch of processing done through Lambda. Okay. We queue them up mm -hmm. and makes a queuable message into okay. SQS. And from the S, uh, SQS, we call a bunch of other lambdas and then call our APIs and push this data straight into the Salesforce. Okay. Makes sense. So why do you not? Why do you don't use Kinesis Streams or manage Kafka service? Why do you use ECS? Right. I mean, Kinesis is great too, but um, uh, our um, Kafka producer is running. Uh, uh, on an Expedia group applications. Okay. So that's why we had to consume from that same instance. I see. That's why we are using the uh, Kafka consumer. That makes sense. And then Aurora, right? Yeah. Why not S3? So why for us, data the store? use case was mm -hmm. more around aggregating the data, sorting the data. So for that purpose, we are mm -hmm. leveraging the power which a MySQL engine provides. And that's why this Aurora. We actually tried it out with a few other solutions out there. But then in, uh, in the end, we decided Aurora is best for our use oh, case. Wonderful. So what are we talking about in terms of scale? How much data are you processing? Is it nightly, daily? Walk Great us through question. That. So throughout this architecture, mm -hmm. we are actually processing 
500 to 800 million rows on a daily basis oh, wow. from this uh, top section right there. Yeah. And then through this bottom section, we are consuming around uh, 5 to 10 million events per, per day. Wow. Uh, what does the future hold? Where do you see progress? So this architecture is actually very scalable. So mm -hmm. in future, if we want to add more sources over here, we can easily add them. If we want to consume more events, we can easily uh, consume them. So it's a very scalable architecture. Mm -hmm. Second, uh, we want to leverage uh, the Fargate as well into our architecture. Uh -huh. So that's where we are heading to. Very cool. Thanks for sharing this unique architecture with integrating your core you know, booking system and other core applications with Salesforce, but converting into an appropriate format, both on the batch layer and the streaming layer. Thank you for being here on the show. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching. This is my architecture.